Hello everyone. I am Hilda Pipnow. Today, I'd like to present my theory of interpersonal relations. Here is a little a bit of my story. That's me when I just graduated from Pottstown Hospital Training School of Nursing in 1931. It was in Pennsylvania where I was born. I am only 22 years old on this photo. I have to say, witnessing the devastating 1918 flu epidemic as a child, greatly influenced my understanding of the impact of illness and death on families. Besides, there were not many career choices for women during that time. But I tried my best to grow beyond traditional women's roles. I have got my bachelor degree in interpersonal psychology at Bennington College in 1943 and my master's in psychiatric nursing from Columbia University, New York in 1947. I retained as a professor emeritus from Rutgers University. I have started first post-baccalaureate program in nursing. I was the only the only person to have been both the executive director and the president of ANA. But the subject of today presentation is Interpersonal Relations in Nursing which was published in 1952 even though I completed my work in 1948. Publication took four additional years because it was groundbreaking for a nurse to contribute this scholarly work without a co-authoring physician. It was different time. Major concepts of my theory derive from how I define nursing. Nursing is an interpersonal process of therapeutic interactions between an individual who is sick or in need of health services and a nurse especially educated to recognize, respond to the need for help. It is a maturing force and an educative instrument involving an interaction between two or more individuals with a common goal. The theory explains the purpose of nursing is to help others identify their felt difficulties and that nurses should apply principles of human relations to the problems that arise at all levels of experience. Furthermore, the nurse and patient work together so both become mature and knowledgeable in the process. The theory explains the phases of interpersonal process, roles in nursing situations and methods for studying nursing. Nursing as an interpersonal process. The attainment of goal is achieved through the use of a series of steps following a series of pattern. The four components of the theory are person, which is a developing organism that strives in its own way to reduce tension generated by needs. The client is an individual with a felt need. Environment, which consists of existing forces outside of the person and put in the context of culture. Health, which is a word symbol that implies forward movement of personality and other ongoing human processes in the direction of creative, constructive, productive, personal, and community living. And nursing, which is a significant therapeutic interpersonal process. It functions cooperatively with other human process that makes health possible for individuals in communities. The nursing model identifies four sequential phases in the interpersonal relationship. They are, orientation, identification, exploitation, and resolution. Let's talk about a variety of roles of the nurse in the therapeutic relationship. The seven main roles are, stranger, teacher, resource person, counselor, surrogate, leader, and technical expert. As a stranger, the nurse receives the patient in the same way the patient meets a stranger in other life situations. The nurse should create an environment that builds trust. As a teacher, the nurse imparts knowledge in reference to the needs or interests of the patient. In this way, the nurse is also a resource person, providing specific information needed by the patient that helps the patient understand a problem or situation. The nurse's role as a counselor helps the patient understand and integrate the meaning of current life situations, as well as provide guidance and encouragement in order to make changes. As a surrogate, the nurse helps the patient clarify the domains of dependence, interdependence, 
in independence. And acts as an advocate for the patient. As a leader, the nurse helps the patient take on maximum responsibility for meeting his or her treatment goals. As a technical expert, the nurse provides physical care for the patient and operates equipment. Additional roles of a nurse include consultant, tutor, socializing and safety agent, environment manager, mediator, administrator, record observer, and researcher. I won't define them in details. I will leave it to the intelligence and imagination of the audience. Here is my message to 21st century. Nursing has made great progress from being an occupation to becoming a profession in the 20th century. As the 21st century approaches, further progress will be reported and recorded in cyberspace. The Internet being one conduit for that. Linking nurses and their information and knowledge across borders. Around the world will surely advance the profession of nursing much more rapidly in the next century. I have to go. I'll let new generations to take from now and continue my work. Let's see how they apply my theory to practice. Hildegard Peplau theory have influenced 21st century practice today because she formed the backbone by inclusion of patient education of nursing's professional development, while we as nurses learn a great deal of knowledge about the discipline of nursing in our education program it is through our practice that we build this acquired knowledge. Her theory is instrumental to all areas of nursing today. The empirical basis provided by Peplau is perceived to be a positive attribute to its present and future centuries to come. Her interpersonal relations theory is focused where the nurse and patient are intricately involved in a relationship that works and evolves toward a common goal which is meeting the patient's needs. Hildegard Peppel's theory has also contributed to our 21st century nursing practice by giving us the guidance and nursing knowledge in the direction of education, practice and research. It further gives us the richness, depth and meaning to successfully interact and intervene with our patients. She enabled nurses to move away from the disease model orientation to one of psychological meaning of events, behaviors and feelings so that it could be incorporated in our nursing interventions. Peplau gives nurses a new sense of purpose and direction consistent with values of nursing and increased effectiveness achieved through systematic, thoughtful forms of practice. She helped nurses by teaching us that the nurse through varying progressive phases and adoption of roles to initiate and build a relationship with the patient so that the patient's needs are identified and the nurse's assistance is no longer needed. So far we've covered theoretical part of Peplau's work. Let's apply it to practice. Hello, Mrs. Smith. I am Maria Margo. I am a registered nurse. What brings you in today? Lately I've been feeling fatigued, urinating a lot, and thirsty most of the time. I don't know what is happening to me. When did these symptoms start? Well, these symptoms started about a month ago. I see. I will take your vital signs right now and take your weight and the doctor will see you shortly. Thank you. Your vital signs are within the normal range. Your weight is 230 pounds. Oh, oh. The orientation phase defines the problem. It starts when the nurse meets the patient, and the two are strangers. After defining the problem, the orientation phase identifies the type of service needed by the patient. The patient seeks assistance, tells the nurse what he or she needs, asks questions, and shares preconceptions and expectations based on past experiences. Essentially, the orientation phase is the nurse's assessment of the patient's health and situation. Hello again. Your doctor has ordered some lab tests for you. I can take samples right now. Okay. How long before we get the results of these tests? It might be ready within a week or so. We will give you a call when the results are ready. This sounds good. Thank you so much. Take a look at the factors influencing orientation phase. 
as we see, the same factors influence a nurse and a patient in their relationships, such as values, culture, race, beliefs, past experiences, and expectations. Except, a nurse is also influenced by preconceived ideas. Hello, Mrs. Smith. It's been almost a week. How are you doing today? Nothing has changed much. I am sorry to hear that. We've got the results of your tests. The doctor is ready for you. And I'll see you after. Thank you. I hope everything went well with the doctor. The doctor told me that I have diabetes. I am surprised that I have diabetes. None of my family members had it. Isn't hereditary? It is one of the risk factors. There are some others, such as high blood pressure, abnormal cholesterol levels, a sedentary lifestyle, and overweight. How much do you know about diabetes? All I know about diabetes is that I cannot eat sugar or sweet foods and that I should take insulin but the doctor is not giving me any insulin. He prescribed pills. Well, there are two types of diabetes. What you have is type 2. And in type 2 diabetes, your cells become resistant to the action of insulin, and your pancreas is unable to make enough insulin to overcome this resistance. Instead of moving into your cells where it's needed for energy, sugar builds up in your bloodstream. Those pills would help you regulate your blood sugar level. Since all of this started, I am not able to do my work at home efficiently, because I am constantly tired and didn't feel like doing any work at home. Besides I am not sleeping very well during the night. Because I have to wake up more than once to go to the washroom. It might take some time to get back to your normal activities after starting the medication. I have this pamphlet that could help you understand diabetes better. I'll go get it for you. Thanks. You should be aware of the signs and symptoms of low or high blood sugar. It's in section 2 of the pamphlet. You could get one of the home test devices to monitor your blood sugar levels and keep a record of it. I'll teach you how to use it. Oh, I'd like it. Thanks. An important part of managing diabetes as well as your overall health is maintaining a healthy weight through a healthy diet and exercise plan. I'll give referral to see a dietitian. And you could activities you enjoy, such as walking, swimming or biking. What's most important is making physical activity part of your daily routine. This is a lot to remember. Is everything you said here in the pamphlet? I understand. It could be overwhelming. Everything is there. Here, let me show you. Thank you so much. You remind me of my daughter. She always does these things for me. And mark the stuff the way you are doing now you. You are just like her. That is a huge compliment. Thank you so much. We are both trying to help you and be there for you. However, she is your family and I'm your nurse. You are right. The identification phase includes the selection of the appropriate assistance by a professional. In this phase, the patient begins to feel as if he or she belongs and feels capable of dealing with the problem which decreases. The feeling of helplessness and hopelessness. The identification phase is the development of a nursing care plan based on the patient's situation and goals. Hello Mrs. Smith. It's been one month. How are you doing? I'm feeling better. I see my dietitian and follow the diet. I've also started walking 30 minutes three times a week. I am happy to hear that you are better. You could gradually increase your activities. What about setting a goal to walk four to five times per week? Exercise also increases your sensitivity to insulin, which means your body needs less insulin to transport sugar to your cells. Can I assist you with anything else in achieving the goals we set at last meeting? I think I've got everything I need for now. Thank you very much. The exploitation phase uses professional assistance for problem-solving alternatives. 
the advantages of the professional services used are based on the needs and interests of the patients. In the exploitation phase, the patient feels like an integral part of the helping environment and may make minor requests or use attention-getting techniques. When communicating with the patient, the nurse should use interview techniques to explore, understand, and adequately deal with the underlying problem. The nurse must also be aware of the various phases of communication. Since the patient's independence is likely to fluctuate, the nurse should help the patient exploit all avenues of help as progress is made toward the final phase. This phase is the implementation of the nursing plan, taking actions toward meeting. The goals set in the identification phase. Before you leave, I want to ask you how you are feeling about dealing with all of this. If I'm being honest with you, I'm overwhelmed and stressed. Not sure if I could manage all of this. May I suggest you to involve your family in the situation to support you and help around the house? I'll give you our office phone number. You could call us anytime during our opening hours. We will guide and support you with anything we could. The final phase is the resolution phase. It is the termination of the professional relationship since the patient's needs have been met through the collaboration of patient and nurse. They must sever their relationship and dissolve any ties between them. This can be difficult for both if psychological dependence still exists. The patient drifts away from the nurse and breaks the bond between them. A healthier emotional balance is achieved and both become mature individuals. This is the evaluation of the nursing process. The nurse and patient evaluate the situation based on the goals set and whether or not they were met. Well, to be called the lead, uh, 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 our leader at, you know, at that early point was a terrible burden, let me tell you. And I had really never thought of myself as a pioneer. I thought of myself as someone who, uh, in a sustained way, uh, studied patient data and kept up with the literature, not just in nursing, but in psychiatry and sociology and psychology and, and other fields, and tried to put this material together in a way that would be useful to the nurses for whom I was responsible, who were working with patients. And that if it was helpful to me and to them, then I ought to tell the other nurses about it. And uh, so I did workshops and lectures and so on. Uh, one of my main strategies, I would say, was that from very early on, uh, beginning with 1948 and onward, I made up my mind that I would never disparage nursing. Now, there are things about nurses and nursing sometimes do make me personally uncomfortable, but I have not disparaged nurses or nursing publicly. I have seen many leaders who do that, and it offends me when they do, and nurses kind of seem to lap it up, it seems to me, but I personally made uh, the commitment that I would do it. I have thought of myself much more as a teacher than a leader. In fact, if you look at some of my earlier speeches and papers, uh, I guess you could say I was a preacher. Okay. <laughs>